Hello again, Chef, and welcome to this week's What's Good Now? Well, Sierra grass is pretty good now, which is a little bit surprising this far into the winter, but the weather's been mild and so far it's holding its own. And Sierra grass has a lovely coriander flavour, so it is basically our native coriander. Um, but you'd use it as you would chives, you can see it resembles those. Um, it also has quite a uh, hint of coconut there, which is interesting when you think of the uh, context uh, such as Thai and Indian food where you'd find coriander and coconut um, cropping up. So that's rather handy combination of flavours there. Um, sea radish is very good. Um, there's several cabbage family plants of, this, of which this is one, which are really good and, and hardy through the winter. This one is holding its own against the salt sea spray and the cold weather on, on the beach. As the name suggests, it grows on the beach. Um, but what we tend to do with this one is uh, strip off the side leaflets and then you've got something there which is really crunchy and, and tastes very strongly of radish and mustard. And I tend to chop that down and put it through salads um, and uh, you could also put it in something like a, a raita or something like that with yogurt. If you cook it, you're going to lose that mustard flavour, but it is very, very nice. You get a, a sort of sweet cabbagey flavour if you cook those down. And then the leaflets, well, you can just use them as, as quite a pungent mustard green. Um, an old favourite three-corner three garlic here. This will be with us right through the winter, as I think I said last week. Um, but you just can't go wrong with this plant. I would always use it fresh um, and chop it down and use it just like chives. Chuck it in at the end of your dishes. You can use it cooked longer though, but then it will taste more of a sort of sweet onion flavour and less of the slight garlic kick that it has. This one is charlock, and again there's a bit of a surprise that it's flowering. Um, there's quite a lot that's fully flowering. These ones are just sort of budding now. Um, it's a mild mustard leaf, uh, and I would tend to use this more as greens than as salad. And it's got nice crunchy and chunky stems there as well, which give a bit more body to it when you cook it. We also have charlock seeds, which um, they're really more of our dry store. We, we will introduce a few dry store elements into these videos. Um, and charlock seeds are essentially wild mustard seeds. So you can use them just like mustard, but there are native wild mustard seeds. Then we have watercress, which is still good now. Since we haven't had any frost, it's still thriving. As soon as the frost comes, it'll be the end of this, so I'd advise you to get it while you can. Um, and, of course, the difference between this and the farmed stuff is just that it's been allowed to grow and become much bigger. And that has two effects. One is, one is that you have more more vegetable really. You've got these large stems which can be chopped or used in pieces as, as a vegetable um, or used as a crunchy salad. And then you've got the leaves much more pungent than the young ones. There's more of the mustard oils and wasabi from notes uh, in, the, in the more well-developed leaves. Alexander's. We're going to do a special video all about Alexander's uh, which will be on our Patreon channel. Um, but there's two things with Alexander's. One is well, three. You can cook it raw, you can cook it briefly, or you can cook it long. Now, raw and briefly, you're going to get the full pungency. It's aromatic and bitter. So you'll need to be balancing that against a strong sauce, you know, a rich sauce or a very sharp sauce. Alternatively, you can balance it against other ingredients in a thing like a classic coleslaw with all of the other ingredients there that um, mean that the Alexander's doesn't tend to dominate. The leaves, if you're going to use it raw, you'd want to use it like parsley, basically. Chop them down and substitute for parsley. The old English name for Alexander's is parsley of Alexandria, which alludes to that. Um, but then if you cook it for longer, you're going to find it's just a very mellow and um, sweet vegetable. All of that pungency and bitterness will eventually cook off, so you'll have a much milder thing if that's the way you want to go with it. Okay, so that's it for this week's What's Good Now.